Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at static routing. So let's get straight into it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to configure PC0. But before I do that, it's just probably worth it mention to notice the cables here. You can see this is straight through going to our switch, but you'll also notice that we've got a straight through going from switch 0 up to router 0. But across from router 0 to router 1, we've got basically a crossover. Okay, if I wanted to change the labels of these, say to for example router 1 and router 2, it's just a matter of just clicking on these and selecting and in a moment I'll do that on the actual router itself and the configuration. But let's jump into the PCs first to get these sorted. So at the moment you can see that they're not currently set. So I'm going to, this is the Dublin network, so what I'm going to do is put an IP address of 192.168 dot one dot something so i'm just going to choose um just random sake i'm just going to say dot dot one dot, sorry dot one dot five and the subnet mask as you can see is the default slash 24 subnet mask and the default gateway so in a moment i'm going to label the router as 192.168.1.1 okay so once i've done that i can click on x and X again, I'm happy with that configuration in Dublin. And I'm now gonna go over to the Cork network and you can see there just a moment ago, I had this on the 10 network. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give this guy 10.0.0.0.5 and I'm gonna, you'll notice there that because it's in the 10 range, even though it's a private address, it gave it a slash eight subnet mask. However, I'm changing this to the CIDR notation. Um, I'm using a slash 24. So the default gateway that I'm going to give, and I'll configure this in a few moments on the router, I'll ensure that it's on the same network, which is 10.0.0, and I'll give it the dot one address for the router address. So let's click on X to that. Okay, so now it's time to configure our routers. So I'm going to dive straight into R1. And because this is a new router, it hasn't got a name yet, so I'm going to say enable. I'm going to go conf t, and the first thing I'm going to do is give it a name. I'm going to call it R1, and then I'm going to exit. Um, you can see that that's applied straight away to the running configuration file. Um, now the next step is to obviously to add an IP address onto each of the router's interfaces. So I'm gonna go firstly to the default gateway. So this is fast ethernet zero slash zero. So I'm gonna go interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. I'm gonna go IP address or IP add for short, 192.168.1.1. And I'm gonna go 255, 255, 255. Make sure I don't make any mistakes, dot zero and I'm gonna say no shut. Once I do this, I should see my links turn to green, which I do. Also, I'll now go interface fast ethernet zero slash one, because I now wanna configure the WAN side of the network. And I'll go into, as we can see here, there's an IP address on the 172.16.1 network. So I'm gonna add an IP address on this side, 172.16.1.1. And then it's again, I've used a standard, well, in, in fact, it's a slash 24 mask. It's not a class B mask. So I'm gonna use a slash 24 again, and I'm gonna say no shut. You'll notice this time the link doesn't go green when I, when I say no shut. And the reason for this is because I need to go over to my friend here, OR2, to bring this interface up. So let's do the configuration of OR2 now. So let's say enable. Conf T, the first thing I'm going to do is say this, give this router a host name of R2. I'm then going to go directly into interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Let's configure that one side first. IP address, and I'm going to say 172.16.1. Can't use dot one. I have to use another IP, unique IP address on this wide area network. So I'm going to use dot two in this case, 255.255.255.0, and I'm going to say no shut. Now we should see our WAN link come up, which we do. So all good so far. I'm going to go exit, I'm going to go interface 
fast ethernet 0 slash 1 to start configuring the default gateway for our PC here in Cork. So if I just move that over, you can see this PC1 is going to need to have the default gateway set. And we said that that was going to be 10.0.0.1. So let's double check that just for a moment, just to make sure. Okay, yep, 10.0.0.1. Okay, and let's pop back here. So I'm going to go interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. That's, that's perfect there. Um, I'm going to go IP address. 10.0.0.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and the last step I'm going to do is no shut. Now once I do this all the links are obviously green now which is a good sign but um, we'll see that STP is spanning tree protocol is just working in the background that's why this link is amber still that will turn green in, in about 30 seconds okay just to, to ensure that there's no loops introduced in this network um, if I want to just speed up this process, I can use a little trick here by pressing fast forward. Okay, so I can see now all of my links are green. Now a good way to test this is to actually use the real time mode. We could do a little quick test here from PC0 to PC1. And what we're going to see is that these pings fail. And you might say, well, why do they fail? If I delete that and go into simulation mode, simulation mode shows me a little bit more detail. So let me just zoom out for a moment. Um, just a tiny bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do another test or simulation from here to here, but this time I'm going to watch it step by step. So off goes the ICMP or the ping message from PC0 in this case. But once it gets to R1, what we're going to see is R1 doesn't know where to send it. Okay, and we'll look at R1's routing table in just a moment. So essentially what's happening is R1 is coming back and saying to PC0, sorry, I can't forward this to this destination network. So why is this? Let's have a look at the router. So let's go back to R1 and let's have a look at its routing table. So I'm gonna go back to privilege mode. Okay, and I'm gonna run a command called show IP route. And what this essentially does is it's gonna look at its routing table for R1. And once we do this, guys, we can see, if I just make this a little bit, just show this the, 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 a little bit more of the screen, you can see from this command show IP root, there's a whole list of codes here given. So you'll notice here the C is for connected. You'll also see S for static. And there's a whole other range of various different codes. We don't have to worry about them so much just yet. But essentially, we can see that the, the two routes that the router knows about is these two connected routes. Now I like to actually just maximize this out. So you can see in this case, we've got this class B network usually, okay, this 17216. But what, what we've done is we've subnetted it and we've basically made it a slash 24. But we can see that this router or one knows about essentially two different networks. It knows about the 172.16.1.0 network and that's con directly connected out the fast Ethernet 01. You might say, where is this? Well, this is this int this network here, right here, this WAN network. And you'll also notice that the second network it knows about is the 192.168.1.0 slash 24, and it's directly connected on fast Ethernet 00. So this is this network here, the Dublin network. So what do we need to do to get this to work or to, to be able to route traffic? Well, by default, because the router doesn't know where to send that destination packet, which is on the 10 network, it basically discards the packet. So in order for us to essentially teach R1 to this destination network, we need to add a static route. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go Conti, Comt or configure terminal, whichever you prefer, and we're going to write in this router, or we're going to teach this router to this destination cork network. So I'm going to go IP route, and th this command works. There's a number of ways this command works, but one such way is by saying IP route, the destination network address. So the destination network address is 10.0.0.0, and the subnet mask of the destination network, we said it was 255.255. 255.0 and the next part and this sometimes catches out people but the next part is what's the next top IP address to take me to this destination network 
So the next top IP address is, if you remember, we label this one as 172.16.1.1, but we label this one as 172.16.1.2. So according to R1, the next top is going to be 172.16.1.2, and that's what I'm going to configure here. Okay, so once I do that, 172.16.1.2, I'm going to press enter. And once I do that, I'm going to go back to exit. I'm going to exit, if you like, configuration mode. I'm going to have a look at the IP routing table again, show IP route. Now we can see, guys, that we've got a new entry in here. And have a look at that. What it's essentially saying there is it's saying, I've just learned about this new network. It's a static route that's gone into the table. Okay, I've been taught that. And it's to the 10 network. And we can see right above here, this is, this is a subnetted network because this is originally 10 is a basically, by default, it's a slash eight network, but we've subnetted to slash 24. But you'll also notice, guys, that it also tells in this routing table, it also tells how do I get to that network? And that's via this next top of 172.16.1.2. Okay, if I hover over this router, okay, usually what it will do is, you know, it may not in this in this case, but it, it, it usually it might pop up a little window to show us the, the interfaces on this. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing it now right this second. Maybe I'm not because I'm in simulation, simulation mode. Let's just hover over it in real time mode. Okay, maybe not. Let, well, we can, we can demonstrate this on the router itself, just if you wanted to double check that, that it indeed was that interface. So if I go show IP interface brief, or show IP int brief, we'll see that this interface on fast ethernet 00, zero remember, that's, that's, that's this one. Okay, so we can see that it's basically this interface. So that was my next top IP address. Now, it's nice to do a test here. We can see, obviously, before it failed. I'm going to delete that test. I'm going to go back to our simulation mode, and I'm going to run that again. Now, what we'll see is this time we'll get a little bit further because now our router one knows where that destination network is. And you can see this time it's actually sent an ARP message across and said, hey, what is your, I know how to get to you, but what's your MAC address? So this guy will repeat the MAC address back to our one but you can see in this time, you'll notice there that all of a sudden my ICMP, it's, it's, it's basically being dropped, okay? And STP is sending other messages. Now, because OR1 didn't know the MAC address of OR2 there, it basically had to ARP for it first. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna delete this and that's fine. I wanna try that again, but this time OR1 will know the ARP address for or two, so it should be able to directly send this message over. So in this case, here goes the ICMP. Oh, the ARP is coming back. Oh, the ARP is now continuing. Okay, so or two now is continuing on. That ICMP, we're still not there. What happened this time was the router two went, oh, you're looking with this ICMP to talk to PC1 but I don't have the MAC address for PC1. So again, we're at this stage whereby the ICMP has failed once more. So what I'm gonna do then is finally, I'm gonna delete that, try this once more. Okay, here goes our ICMP again. Now R1 should have the MAC address for R2, so it should go straight across, and R2 should have the MAC address for PC1, so it should go directly, it shouldn't need to ARP again, and it doesn't. But what we're gonna see here now, guys, is that PC1 will respond, which is great, but once it gets back to R2, it's going to fail. So it's gonna fail and it's gonna keep failing. Why is it gonna keep failing? Because R2 doesn't have a route back. So it doesn't have a route in its routing table back to the 192.168.1 network. So you can see there in this case, it's returning an error response back to PC1. If we go back in here and go show IP route, we can see from OR2's perspective, what does it look like? We can see from OR2's perspective, it knows about only two connected networks, the 10 network and the 172.16.1.0 network. So you can see this is this network here connected and this network here. So we obviously have to teach this network about the 192. So let's teach this, this router. I'm gonna go COMT, I'm gonna go IP route. 
So what's the destination network I want to teach it? It's 192.168.1.0 with a subnet mask of this destination network, 255.255.255.0. And what's the next top IP address? So again, remember we're at OR2 now. We want the next top IP address, which is this interface right here. So again, this is going to be 172.16.1.1. In this case, 172.16.1.1. And once I press enter, I exit, show IP route, I now have a static route, which is good to see. It, we've now introduced that route into the routers, router 2's routing table. So now let's delete that test and let's try it once more, guys. Here's our moment of truth. So let's go again. So off we go from PC0 up to switch 0 over to R1, R1 across to R2 over to switch one, back from PC one, off we go to OR2. It failed here the last time, but now that it's got a static route, off it comes back to us. And there we are, guys. We've got a successful network. So we've, we've successfully routed from one LAN, be it the Dublin LAN, you can see the green tick, across our wide area network, over to our Cork network. And how we've done this is by using a static route. And we'll note that we needed to configure a static route on both R1 and on R2. We, we noticed that when we configured it only on R1, R2 couldn't speak back. So this is the thing to, to, to note about static routes. We, uh, we have to configure on both sides of the link. Okay, so that's something to take note of. Thank you very much for your attention here, guys, today. And I hope you enjoyed that. All the best. Bye-bye.